Today's video is going to be about market structure, but we're not going to use too many indicators today. We're really just going to be looking at the naked scanner. Now, I like to call it the naked scanner because what you'll notice, the more you study, what you'll notice um, as you study Forex or trading or investing more and more, there are a lot of different indicators that you can use to help you get a better understanding of how price is moving. But some people simply trade off of price action. Now, this may be something that works for you or maybe something that doesn't work for you, but it will give you a better understanding of the market. So without further ado, we are going to go ahead and get started. The website that I'm using today is called TradingView.com. Um, and TradingView.com was founded in 2011, and it's a really great platform for market analysis. It has a lot of market news and a lot of really cool features. Um, they even have some chat sections where you can interact with other traders or just read their ideas to see what's going on. So if you really want to learn, the resources are there. You just have to be ready. You have to be willing. Um, and you just have to be willing to start this journey without quitting. So today we're going to be focusing on the naked scanner. And that is what we are currently looking at on my screen right now. Now, looking at any type of investment chart, you will notice something like this, right? And these things are called candles. And candles are telling you all about how price is moving in a particular market. Now, you're going to notice some green candles and you're going to notice some red candles because these two different types of candles are telling you different things about the price. Now, if you see a series of green candles, for example, let's just look here and focus on these candles, right? And we can look here, right? And focus on these candles, right? And we can look here and focus on these candles. Now, what green candles tell you about the market is that price is going to be going in an upward direction, right? We see it here from this series of candles, and we see it here from this series of candles. Now, the opposite of when price is going up is when price is going down, which you'll notice by a series of red candles, right? So we have a selling action here, and if you look over here, you also have some selling action there. Now, one thing you will notice about any Forex chart or any type of investment chart is that the market never consistently just goes one way. Like you'll never see the market just going straight up, right? And no sell opportunities and vice versa. You'll never see the market going straight down without any buying opportunities. Now, there is always going to be a pattern, right? You'll see the market will be down at some places and then it'll go up, right? Then you'll see that it'll come back down. Then you'll see that it'll go up. Then you'll see that it'll come back down and it'll go up and it'll come back down. And this is happening in every market on every time frame. And I'm just going to scroll back just a little bit so you can see these series of peaks and valleys that are consistently happening throughout the market. Now, as a trader, it's going to be important for you to understand what this means because these are going to be your entry points um, and your exit points for when you actually are getting into those trades. Now, if you see that there are a collection of candles, if you see that there are a collection of candles, right, that have several wicks, um, and they're called wicks because if these are called candles, the little stick on a candle is called a wick. If you see a bunch of wicks, that's just giving you an indication that the market may be about to reverse. As you can see, I've circled this collection of wicks. We have one, two, three, four wicks, which means that for the last hour or so, because we're on a 15 minute time frame, which means that each one of these candles represents a minute, price was having a hard time getting past this area. And once it struggled for some time, the market actually had a reversal which means that it went from going in one direction. As you can see, we had a climb here. You see your collection of wicks, and then you see your reversal, right? Now, the same thing can happen at the bottom. You'll see that the market may be trending down, which you'll notice from the downward pattern. And then you'll see another collection of wicks at the bottom telling you that the market is about to reverse, right? and now move in a buying direction, right? 
So these ups and downs are what makes up the market structure. And the market structure is what's going to help you to, again, enter and exit your trades. Now, something that you need to understand is that these areas, right? And I'm just going to get a line. These areas where you see that price was in a buying motion, right? These areas where you see price was in a buying motion and then it hits a cap. This is called area of resistance. That means that price is resisting going any higher than it was. And again, if you see a collection of wicks at the bottom, this is called an area of support where price is supported and it will start to go up. Now, again, this is pretty simple. Um, I always say if you can see it, you can trade it. So we put a horizontal line at the top right here just to highlight our area of resistance. Um, again, I love TradingView because it has all these amazing tools which will help you to mark up your chart and take notes on what you're seeing so that you don't have to remember and things change. You can mark up your charts today and still have those same entry points that are valid a day from now, a week from now, or even a month from now because what you'll see is that price will continue to visit these same areas. Now, I'm just going to add a few more horizontal lines just so we can check out these levels and really see uh, what I mean when I talk about those patterns, right? So give me a second, guys. I just need to move some stuff out the way. All right. So, again, one way to identify a reversal um, and to see which way the market is going to go is to pay attention to these wicks. And I'll just circle them again so that we can see. These are areas where the market has turned around, right? And another thing is that because the market is consistently moving up and down, you'll notice that areas that were previously support, right, or areas where you see the wicks in the market went up, they do have the tendency to also become reversal points or pivot points. So a pivot point is a place where the market can either go up or the market could go down as we can see demonstrated in this example right here. So if we were going to be getting into this trade, right, we see that the market was going up, right? It broke through a resistance. It continued to go up. It hit another area of resistance. We see that the market sold, and it didn't quite sell all the way down to the previous support, but a new support level was created here, right? Then we see the market went up again, it hit the same area of resistance, which you can identify by the wicks. And then we see that the market sold, right? Then we see that this became a temporary area of support. The market went up. It created a new area of resistance. And then the market sold down, creating a new level of support. And this will continue to happen over and over and over again. So even if you didn't have any indicators on your chart, just by being able to identify these market patterns, what we can assume or assess is that because we had this, 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 that the next logical thought would be that the market is going to go up back in this direction and we can set our take profit or we can set our next resistance level here and consider this TP1 or take profit one, or we can set another level here right, which will be our second resistance or TP2. Now, if you are getting in for a buy, which means you're getting in at a level of support where you see a collection of wicks at the bottom and the market is pushing up, um, the market is going to go up and your TP is going to be above it because we are expecting a buy and vice versa. If the market, if we got into a trade here and we knew that the market was going to go down, right? We would set our TP here, right? TP1 would be here, right? And TP2 would be here because the market continued to go down. So when you're in for a sell, your profit levels will be at the bottom because price is dropping. And when you're in for a buy, your profit levels will be at the top because price is rising. Now, again, these are things that you can notice and identify without having any additional indicators on your chart, but having those indicators will tell you a little bit more about the price and to help you find your entry points. So a very, very, very simple and free indicator that you can use on TradingView is your moving average. So you can click on indicators 
and you just type in moving average. And you want to type in moving average exponential. That's what you want to click on. Um, it will pop up your chart. It'll look something like this, right? It'll look something like this. And we're just going to change the settings really quickly. You want to change the length to 200, which means you're looking at the price over the last 200 moves. And you want to change the method to EMA, which is exponential moving average, which gives you more information over a longer period of time. So we're going to click OK. Now, typically what you'll see is that if your candles are above your EMA, right? And this is just a, a tip, right? We have a, a small level of support here. And we can also see that the candles are above this blue line or EMA, letting us know that price is above average. And you should probably look for more buying opportunities, right? Until you see a clear level of resistance and vice versa. Typically, if the candles are falling below the EMA, you are going to want to look for sell opportunities, but still be mindful of your levels of support and resistance, right? Now, if we were to zoom out, you can see that you can create many, many, many levels so that you'll always know areas where the market is going to revisit. So because we zoomed out, we can see a little bit more of the chart. And let's just check out our pattern again from this level of support. So we have the support, we have the resistance, right? We have a support. We see it breaking through the support, creating a new support, right? We see our collection of wicks telling us the market is going to turn around. We see the market go up. We see it hit a level of resistance. We see the market came down. We see it was in our same support area. We see the market went up. We see a level of resistance. We see the market came down. We see a level of support. We see the market went up. We see a level of resistance. We see the market came down, created a new level of support. We see the market drop lower, created a new level of support. And now we see the market dropping even lower, creating another level of support. So what we can assume is that the market is going to eventually turn back around once it hits our next level of support and it is going to go back up. Now, just be mindful, this isn't going to happen on your time. The market is going to do what it wants to do. But the cool thing is that if it does continue to drop and break your previous level of support, what you can do is just scroll back further in the chart to see where the next level of support will be. So this was just a brief overview of support and resistance also helping you to understand how the market moves just by looking at it visually because trading it doesn't have to be hard and you don't really need to stay in the market forever or be on your computer all day just to make a profit so for example if we were going to get in for a buy um down here let's just say this was our entry point right and we were going to get in for a buy right here and then we wanted to stay into this trade up until the next level of resistance, right? That would be about 46 pips. Um, and pips are just how the market is measured. And you would just multiply the number of pips that you're expecting the market to move by your risk. So the smallest risk that you can take when you're trading Forex is 10 cents per pip. And if you were to multiply 10 cents times 46 pips, then you'll be able to make four dollars and sixty cents now if you were going to use a higher lot size because it's really just up to how much capital you have to trade and let's just say you were using ten dollars per pip instead of ten cents per pip then you will walk away from the same exact trade with four hundred and sixty dollars which really isn't bad for just clicking the button on your computer so this was just meant to be a quick video i just wanted to give you guys a little bit of introduction to the naked scanner and how to understand what you're looking at before you really jump into taking these trades. So I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you have a better understanding of market structure. If you do need a more in-depth overview of market structure, I do have two videos on my channel called Market Structure Part 1 and Market Structure Part 2, which goes into this concept with a little bit more detail. Again, 
This channel is designed to help you understand the foreign exchange market and to push you to become an independent and profitable trader. If this video was helpful, I hope that you like it. Leave a comment and share it with somebody who you think this information could help. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you never miss when I go live or when I post another video. So good luck, everybody. Peace and profits and happy trading.